John chapter 16. We're going to look at verse 33. And we are talking about the foundation of the faith of trials. Trials, parasmos in the Greek. It can mean either, you know, a trial or it also is the same Greek word for temptation. Temptation. And we've seen the last two studies, James and Peter, uh, this week where the Bible says we're to count it all joy. We're to be joyful. We're to rejoice that we're going through these difficulties. God has a purpose. He has a plan for these things. And he's for us. He's on our side. He loves us. And today in John 16, we're going to hear from Jesus himself, right? And Jesus will tell his own disciples, listen, trials are inevitable. Trials are a part of the Christian faith. You know, um, there's there's different voices in Christianity today. There are those that are that are uh, for themselves, right? Uh, Paul will warn the Ephesian elders in the book of Acts. He goes, after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, drawing disciples after themselves, right? And I think we're 2,000 years after Paul. I think there's way more of that in Christianity today. There's so many people that are looking to build their own stuff, their own thing, their own ideas, and it's just not the Lord. It's just not of God. Um, you know, it, it doesn't work, and you have to be careful, and they'll always flatter you. They'll always, you know, give you things and, and those types of ideas, and it just doesn't work. It, it hurts you in the long run. Where Jesus, who really, really loves his disciples, he loves them so much here in John 16, he'll look at them and say, I love you, but you're going to go through trials. There's going to be hardship, and they're going to happen on purpose because there's parts of you that have to be burnt away. There's parts of you that have to be cut away in order for you to move on to what I have for you. So let's see what Jesus says here. John 16, verse 33, Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you, Jesus says. And John 16 is a great chapter. He says that in me, you may have peace. You know, when it comes to trials, a very important principle we need to learn is that only in Jesus are we going to find peace. You know, one of the things that trials allows us to learn is that we're not going to find peace from the vacation we go on, right? We're not going to find peace from the promotion at work. We're not even going to find peace from more money in our bank accounts. You might go, well, I'd love to try that out one day and see if it works, test that experiment, right? We're not going to find peace in the relationship. You know, the single people want to be married. The married people want to be single, right? You're not going to find peace in those things. You're not going to find peace in, I don't know, in, in this new opportunity. You're not going to find peace in ministry, in, in ministry. You're not going to find peace there. There's only one place where you're going to find that peace you're longing for. And Jesus tells us, in me, you may have peace. It's in Jesus. It's clinging to Jesus. The psalmist says, in your presence, Lord, is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So the place you'll find peace and pleasure and real prosperity is getting close to Jesus. That's it. And trials have a way of helping us cling to Jesus. You ever wonder why you pray more when you're going through a trial? You ever wonder, all of a sudden you're like, Lord, I'm going to pray, I'm reading my Bible, it, because the trial had come. It's amazing what happens. Jesus says that in me, you may have peace. Peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. He says, I haven't taken you out of the world yet. The rapture hasn't happened yet, folks, right? We're not in heaven yet. We're in the world. He says, in the world, you will have tribulation. You will have difficulty. You'll have parasmos. You'll have trials. You'll have high-pressure situations. People will oppose you. You'll have difficulty in relationships. You'll have to deal with your own flesh and how it's interacting with the, the things going on in the world around you. Jesus says, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Jesus says what James says, what Peter says. It's God. It's the logos. In trials, rejoice. Consider it pure joy when you face various trials, right? He says, in the world you will have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This is one of my, you know, favorite verses on trials. And the reason why is it reminds me that trials allow me to remember and see that only Jesus can bring me above all these things. 
And if you catch the secret, and that's why the main reason why the Lord allows us to go through trials is to learn that if I simply cling to Jesus, if I hold tight onto him, if like the woman who had the flow of blood, I break through the crowd and I touch the hem of Jesus's garment, If like the two blind men, I cry out, son of David, son of David, that Jesus can heal me and help me to see things from his perspective, why I'm going through this trial. If you do that, if you persevere through difficulty, through parachmos, through this proving short trial, it will bring about something so incredible. It will help you to see that Jesus overcomes the world. He overcomes depression. He overcomes politics. He overcomes all of these things. He heals us on the inside. And Jesus is coming soon to fix things on the outside too, and I can't wait for that. But while we wait, we still, as believers, a foundational principle of the faith is that we go through we go through trials. So persevere, Jesus says, be of good cheer. He says, In me, you will have peace. Whatever you're going through, if you're going through a trial right now, I can't encourage you enough. Go to Jesus. Talk it through with him. Open the Bible. Put down some of these other books. Open the Bible. Search the scriptures in reference to what you're going through. If it's a marital issue, search the scriptures. Find out what does God say? How are you to act as a husband? How are you to act as a wife? How are you to treat your children? What does the Bible say about working? What does the Bible say about our tongue? What does the Bible say about the fellowship of believers, how we're to interact? You'll find God's word. His spirit will use it. The trial, you'll learn what you need to learn, and you'll find you're going through the valley of the shadow of death. So go through it today. Be blessed. Jesus says, I've overcome the world. I've overcome your trial. I'm allowing this trial for you to come to me and learn something about me that I have overcome this world. Be of good cheer. And Father, I pray That, Lord, the trials that your people are facing and the trials that they will face, Lord, that, God, they would teach your people that you, Jesus, are where we find peace and you, Jesus, are how we overcome this world. So, Father, bless them with this, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.